The send data tab contains what we actually refer to as webhooks. A webhook is basically a functionality that is triggered once a certain event occurs. Therefore, we call our webhooks triggers. Within each of our free and pro version, we're offering certain kind of these triggers as you can refer to within this list. For example, the send data on register trigger will fire once a user is registered on your WordPress website. The send data on login will then trigger once a user logs into your website. To give you a brief introduction about the functionality itself upfront, we will take a look of the details of one of the webhook endpoints, in our case, the send data on register webhook. Once you click on it, you will see at the right the details for this specific webhook. At the top, you will see the name and a short description what this webhook trigger does. And at the right, you will see the technical name, which then gets important in case you want to customize it or you want to check certain values like the headers that we are using for sending the request. By default, you will not see a webhook URL within here. That's just the case as I already added one for demo purposes. As this trigger by default does not send out any data, you first need to add a webhook URL, which our plugin can send the data to once this event was fired. To do that, simply click on the add webhook URL button, specify a name for it and add the webhook URL to your specific endpoint. Another great feature in regards to that is our custom mapping. Based on the payload that is sent out, you can dynamically map certain values into the URL that you're adding. For further details about that, please check out the data mapping feature. After you successfully added a webhook URL, you will see the webhook name with a URL within this list. At the right, you will find actions which allow you to do further things with the webhook itself, which allow you to manage the webhook. You can, for example, delete the webhook, activate and deactivate it, which means in case the trigger is fired, you can manually deactivate it if you have, for example, multiple triggers and you do not want to fire that one at the current time. On the settings tab, you will find further details to customize the functionality for that specific webhook URL. At the top, you will see again the current details for this specific URL, as well as all of the available settings. To give you a quick overview, we will go over each of the settings. You can, for example, change the data request type that is used to send over the data to the webhook URL you specified. By default, we always select the JSON, but you can also use XML or form values. In case you would like to change the data request method, which is by default set to post, you can select the method you would like to use for this specific request. We always suggest post as it is the most commonly used one. The next setting refers to our data mapping feature where you can select the template that you would like to use to manipulate the data that we are sending out from this specific webhook URL. To learn more about that, please head over to the data mapping template feature. This specific data mapping template can also be applied to the response that comes back from the webhook endpoint you added. It is also possible to connect an authentication template, which allows you to authenticate the external endpoint in case the webhook URL you added requires one. If it doesn't require one, you do not need to set up any authentication. The allow unsafe URLs feature allows you to use URLs that usually look suspicious and are filtered by our functionality. As for example mentioned in here, URLs that are hardly readable will by default not be allowed to send data to. To make it work anyways, simply check this box and save the settings. The last setting in here is the allow unverified SSL setting, which means we will check against the certificate that is installed with your endpoint. In case it doesn't match, the webhook won't fire and you will see a notification within your debug log file. This setting gets especially then important if you want to locally test the webhooks, as if you haven't activated it and you use a self-signed certificate, your webhook won't fire. The last feature available within the actions is the send demo functionality, which allows you to test if the webhook works. Once you click this button, we will send a demo request with the data that we are usually sending over to this specific webhook URL. Please keep in mind that the data we are sending over is static, so it varies from its values based on your setup and your third party plugins. Under the list of your added URLs, you will find a tab called outgoing data. Once you expand it, you will see further details about what we are sending over. In this example, we will send over the user object, user meta and the ACF data in case ACF, so advanced custom fields is active. Down below, you will also see the whole demo data that we're using as well once you click the send demo button. This data contains all of the necessary keys for giving your external endpoint the data that usually will be sent over once you call this trigger or once this trigger is fired. The last point is a description which usually contains further details about how this trigger works, how it is called and some further tips about how you can make the best out of it. At the left, you will see all of the available triggers, which also can vary depending on which extension you have installed. In case you would like to manage your available extensions, please head over to settings and extensions. In case you're looking for a specific trigger, you can also search for the trigger within the search trigger field. Apart from the standard webhooks, we also offer custom webhooks that are more advanced. For example, the send data on shortcode, which will then trigger once the specific shortcode on your website is called, or the send data on custom action trigger, which triggers whenever you call a specific function within your website code. This specific function is also mentioned as an example within the description, so you can copy and paste it wherever you would like to call it. 